So it's always fun calling out other publications, mm, yes, especially we because we do so much in the space of snowboard reviews. Yes. But outside online, a publication that has notoriously published articles about how snowboarding is dead, snowboarding mm. should die, all this shit. Uh, they, but yet people still subscribe to them that snowboard. And any real snowboarder wouldn't. No. But they put out an article called the top, it was the best snowboards of all time. That was the original title. That was the original title. Then they changed it to the best snowboards of the year. Mm -hmm. And now they've changed, or something like that. I, I, I can't remember exactly what they did. But then they changed it again to long-term review our favorite snowboards right now. Yeah. So the, it's because the comments were getting heated. But this guy, Drew Zeef, who I've never met. Um, never heard of him. Never heard of him. Uh you know he's 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 edited this article, but it was funny that like he made mention that for five years he'd been a tester, so he's tested a lot of product. From my estimates over those five years and like how they do their testing, I think he's maybe ridden less than a hundred snowboards. Probably, I rode one hundred and seventeen boards just last year alone for the main review drop, and then I rode like another thirty after that. Right, and I think my all time best year. Where I didn't like pick stuff up in the fall and ride was like 123 boards. So I mean that's pretty much every day I'm riding a different board mm -hmm. for my season. So yeah. so you, you can kind of get the frame of reference of where we're at with this. And it's outside online, so I don't trust anything that they fucking publish. Generally speaking. But yeah. And then just the picks too. Gotta get into that. My mm -hmm. favorite is well, there's a couple favorites, but probably my favorite favorite is Best All Mountain Snowboard. The Mind Expander. Tell me how that thing's working uh, doing nose and tail <sighs> presses. Yeah, all mountain means you can hit the park with it. And can you, you hit the park with Mind Expander? Yes, sure. Why I not? Have. I've hit the park on a hovercraft. He rides park on a cool bean. I've ridden park on a mini bean. Like, you can ride park on anything. But if we're talking about best at, yeah, yeah the Mind Expander is not on my list. No, best, all, best mountain. all mountain snowboard. No. It's 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 a very specific board. Yeah. And it's very it's a niche board. It is. It's it's got a specific zone that it sits in for its style of riding. It's and a that's car what it excels at. It's a it's a pow it's a it's a it's a pow surfing board that you can ride a groomer if you have to to get back to the lift. Is is, yeah. is it a board that I would ride on firm ass hardpack? No, that nose just skips around mm -hmm. and you lose so much on it. Yeah. Doesn't have a strong enough contact. Point no, out of the it doesn't. Nose that's line. yeah. But what's <clears> funny <throat> is, so that's the best all mountain board. But then the runner up is the Never Summer Shaper Twin. Like you have gone two opposite ends of the spectrum. There. Yeah. The only thing you've got going for you as far as similarities is maybe width. That they're both a little bit wider than average. Right. That's about all you got. Yeah. That is. <laughs> that one's really funny. Um, you know, and then you got. Best powder board, Weston Japau, which is another specialized powder board. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's in the same class as the Mind Expander in there. But then the follow-up, uh, the runner-up is the Burton Day Trader. And I'm like, wait. Which they don't specify that it, like. It's a women-specific. Yeah. Like, it, I mean, a little dude you could put on it. That's what JG rode for years was Day Trader. But still, like. Say something about that. Like runner, it's not a runner-up. It's a women's board. Yeah. It's two different categories. And then the other thing is, is then they get into the custom stuff. Oh my the God. Best custom snowboard. That's not a thing. You can't do that. You can't say this is the best custom snowboard because it's custom. custom. It's made for the person that designed it. So <laughs> you just can't do that. That's right. not a thing. That's like reviewing a boot. That's not a thing you can do. Fuck, dude. Because it's... It's for this person. Doesn't matter how right, how good it rides for this person over here. It was made for them, over here. So, ah, uh, yeah. Like this is what I love, though, is that they say. So they do fifty to hundred boards from more than twenty companies. Last year it was fifty six boards from twenty four companies, and they. That translates up to eight boards and over 25 vertical feet of riding per tester per day. Okay. 
So let me explain something to people here. A typical day of me testing a board is about 20 to 40 vertical feet for how, how I test things. 20 is on the low end, and that's usually boards that I've ridden the year before. It has a small tweak, stuff like that. If it's something I don't know, it gets more. Mm -hmm. So uh, a typical – a classic example, I will use a basin. A lap off of Pally is about 2,000-ish, give or take, depending if I go the long way, vertical feet, or the short way. So that's 2,000 vertical feet down. But I always do such a long lap around the mountain to get down. It takes me seven minutes – from the top of the chair to get down and that lift ride takes about another five so it's 12 minutes for a lap and i can crank out a ton of if there's no one there i can go even faster because i can just point it you know mm -hmm. but you look at that like so how many laps do you think they're actually taking on these boards uh one maybe two so okay, so it's a good wood style test. Probably yeah. done over. I think it's five to seven days. Mm -hmm. I think it's five days. So five days, they're riding a hundred boards in five days. It, the back no. in the day, the most I could ever crank in a day I, that I ever did, I think was fourteen. Yeah, I was gonna say right around thirteen, fourteen. I guess. Fourteen, and that was eight a.m. to four thirty p.m. So mm -hmm. first chair to last chair. Because the other thing that they're talking about in this article specifically, they mentioned how you ride it for a couple laps and then you go and swap your bindings. So that takes time. Yeah. So then if we start thinking about how many boards, like the most amount of boards I've ridden at a demo, because that takes into account having to get bindings mounted, uh, is like 11 or 12 maybe. Um, I could probably push it past that if by you know if walking by a tent I said I want to ride this with these bindings this is my stance I'll be back to get it, but that's not what's happening with this because the, uh, supposedly they're mount they're taking their bindings off and remounting so they don't have that option of having it mounted while yeah. they're riding so yeah we're, I think we're looking at probably eleven boards max in a day is what these guys are riding, which is just obscene. Plus you also have to take into account that snow is firmer in the morning, yep, softer in the afternoon, yep. Because they're doing it in the spring, you you have leg fatigue, you have everything. Like for me, sometimes in the spring, I'll take like I'll put like four or five boards in the car, knowing that I'm only going to ride two, maybe mm -hmm. three, if mm -hmm. I can, if 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 I'm feeling up to it. But there's times, there's days when I go out there, and you know I get there at nine, ten, whatever. By noon, one o'clock, I'm like I'm just cooked, and I know that there's another board I need to ride. I'll just be like I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, and that's. That's it. And so, like we don't do reviews out of those days where we ride eleven to fourteen boards. Not typically. Like no, that's a you thing these days for your other job. Right. Like for that's, me, yeah, that's me riding stuff. Like oh, is this good? Is this not? Do good? I need to but order to this? Actually, doing a review of it takes way more time than yeah. Me. Like and we don't, I don't. We give, we, I can give you a first impression, but that's about it. I yeah. give you an impression on a board after that. And you know how it is on those <clears> days when you're doing that. I'm usually down in the parking lot talking yeah. to the reps. <laughs> yeah. I'm over here like turning screws for whatever rep is getting buried by people, yep. or I'm walking around giving people booze or getting food for people, or you know, I, I mean, Winter Park demo. I didn't even. I don't even think I put my snowboard boots on for two days. Yeah. Well, I, no, that's a lie because the second day I, I drove to Copper and I made a couple laps. The snow sucked. Got in the car and then drove to Winter Park and didn't put my gear on. And uh, but one of just, my favorite things is even further down the article, they go and they have a specific section talking about specialized boards versus all mountain boards. So remember, their favorite all mountain board was the Mind Expander, and it goes in here to say the same goes for directional powder board, which is what the Mind Expander is. Your typical wide, mind expander, big nose, mind expander, swallowtail, which it doesn't have that, but it's a very short tail, is at its best in deep snow, yes, but chunky variable conditions weeks after storm may have you cursing your purchase. But I'm sorry, I thought you said that mind expander was the best all mountain board, which means it's good in every condition. Huh. Weird. This guy's a fucking... Kook. I mean, this is what I love. I've been running the annual test for the last five years, reviewing snowboard gear professionally for the last seven years, and snowboarding for the better part of the past two decades. Here to aid you in your quest for the perfect board, we've put together an authoritative 
review of the best boards in recent years. And then it's all this year's stuff. All this year's stuff. Like, you know, and it, it's funny because the because origin, that, that's probably, yeah, from the original it's article. It's from the original yeah. article where it was, these are the best snowboards of all time. Mm -hmm. And, oh my God, Kevin, we're not recording. Uh, oh, well, I can pull the audio from that and drop it in. But, uh, yeah, so th this guy is just... He's a fucking kook. He's right up there with James Beastie, which actually behind that Hana Lee, for anyone that's watching this on YouTube, there's that t-shirt that says, would you buy a snowboard from him? The reason that shirt exists is because there's a lot of fucking kooks out there now pushing product that they shouldn't or talking about shit that they don't know what they're saying. And it pisses me off to no end. My first job in any form of a shop, I was 15 years old. I am 38 38. I mean, you look at that. I've now done this for more than half my life. And it pisses me off. It's like one of the, there's a quote on the good ride that's like, we're not a retail shop. We're not this. We don't have any background from working retail. Well, just so you know, almost anyone in the snowboard industry started in a shop. Yeah, almost uh, everybody. Almost everyone. Yep. That background means so much to people, whether you worked mm -hmm. in a core shop or a corporate shop. And my big thing is, like, I've worked super corporate. I've worked super core. I've worked in everything in between. I've pretty much sold every brand under the sun. There's, like, a few here and there and some of, like, the newer ones that I haven't sold. But I've been everywhere that I could, and I've done everything that I can. And it's one of those things where this shit just pisses me off because it's, like, these guys... They're so fucking kooky. And I remember when I got, um, they talked about having me go to Goodwood. And I was like, okay, cool. So so we're going to be there for how many days? And I was like, so I have to ride more than two boards in a day? I was like, that doesn't seem right. Yeah. I was like, you know. And then I talked to a guy that actually was a tester in it. And he showed me, that he actually had to spare one of their sheets. And he's like, it was all numbers. And he's like, all you do is you make two laps down the middle. Shoo, 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 done. Two laps through the park, done. You know, if you're riding a park board or this or that. And I yep. was just like, wow. And then I knew some of the people that got invited to be testers. And I was like, I would never trust their fucking opinion. No. Not to mention we've talked to brand owners that have gotten boards back from Goodwood that never got ridden. Yeah. There was no binding in. Yeah. No mark. binding rash. Like, no yeah. no marks on it. Like, brand new. Like, But they won an award. Because they, they, they bought advertising. Yeah. Well, we don't have to worry about good wood anymore. No, we don't. <laughs> They're fucking done. But, yeah, it's crazy. Like, that's why we do these top fives. And realistically, the top fives, it, 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 there's a bias in there. I pick the ones that I feel like I want to see sell more of or that I like more. But they're all good boards, you know? Like, unless yeah, we're we're never, we will never back something that's not good. Yeah. Ever. Ever. Like, yeah. I mean, you can see why I did the top five most mediocre boards of 2020. Mm -hmm. That pissed off a bunch of companies. Yes, it did. Oh, they're not happy. Yeah, well, yeah. don't make mediocre snowboards. Well, I feel bad for Ride in that respect for the Berserker and K2 because that Berserker, something was wrong with that Berserker. Yeah, because I got on it and I didn't have the same issues you did. Yeah, and I think yeah. I don't know what that was. And then the K2 Medium, they figured it. They finally figured it out months later what it was. They gave me one that had what was it 12, 14 millimeters of camber. Mm -hmm. So, and I was like, that would explain so much. It had fourteen millimeters of camber in a deep structure, like that never it's just gonna be weird. Yeah, so yeah. it's twitchy. So I'm gonna re-ride that this year, which is fine. But you know, I mean, uh, it's 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 like I've I've ridden boards that were sent to me after good wood and stuff. And I was like, this board's twisted. Like it came out of the press twisted mm -hmm. and I call the company or I just send them and I'm like, yeah, that board's completely twisted. Uh, it's like the dinosaurs will die. Perry that I never put the review out for. I don't think I did. At least it was twisted. There's like one, there was, I did a Perry review one year and then the next year they gave me one cause they said they tweaked something. And if you put it flat, like it was heel side contact point at the nose was touching and toe side contact, at the tail was touching but the other two were twisted and elevated and that board would just it rides so cro crooked and stuff it's it's also like i was saying in the live stream today i was like i was shitting on no bidet i mean no, no bad day no bidet <laughs> i mean no bad day and gilson i was like i'll never fucking review them i just don't care i'm never going to give them a shot because 
They're shit fucking brands, and they've proven it to me. It's like today with that review of that Cockrell Kung Fu. Did you catch that that no, I put it? Oh, my it, God. No. So there's this company called Cockrell from China. They're made at the Playmaker factory, which also makes Nitro. And the second those boards came in, I was looking at them. I was like, God, these look so much like a Nitro, and it took me a while. But the board reviewed today, which is the Kung Fu, it's a, it's a Nitro Prime. Exactly. Spec for spec. It's a prime, like, it's funny, Cockrell changed their specs by, like, one millimeter, and I was like, one millimeter? I was like, man. That's tolerance. That's a tolerance. That's one of the things that I've learned designing snowboards over the last, like, six, seven months is, like, I don't care if my board comes out as a 159.4. It's a 159, and you're going to yeah. deal with it because you're never going to measure it. Yep. And side cuts, you really think you're going to go look at a board and it's going to say 7.4 meter side cut, and it's actually just a radial 7.4 meter side cut? No. Engineers don't have to tell you those real numbers. You really think the width of your board at the nose is exactly 30 centimeters and at the waist is exactly 25.4? No, it's not. It's not. That's yeah. what we're telling you it is. But it's funny. Fun fact. It's just funny because, yeah, so that Cockerel Kung Fu, that was a Nitro Prime. They sent me the red hair, and they're like, it's our carving pow ish board. It was a Nitro wood cover. It even had power pods, which is specific to Nitro. Ooh. And then they sent uh, the gang, which is a Nitro Cheap Thrills. And I mean, so when I did the review, I was like, yeah, just go buy a Nitro. Because it's funny. They sell the red hair for a hundred something dollars more than Nitro sells the woodcarver for. Well, there you go. And I'm like, this is bullshit. And I, the funny thing was I actually got to show the guys at Nitro, uh, the U.S. guys, Benny Pellegrino, I got to show him that. And he's like, holy shit. And I was like, here's all the photos with everything. Here's the serial numbers. Here's everything. And they're like, we got to go talk to our factory. And so, yeah. But that's this, these are the things that you start to realize. It's mm -hmm. also like it, you'll notice there's going to be a review uh, in 2021 for the uh, for the Kemper Screamer and the Borealis Shaman. Mm -hmm. They're both 159s. They have the exact same shape, side cut, and everything. The flexes are different in there just because of the additives in the core. But that shape is the exact same thing as the niche story. And yep. the reason behind that is niche almost went to GP87. So they had to open that mold. So they designed it. They did everything. Then they moved um, to Mothership. And then they moved to Kyle after that. So that mold was sitting at GP87. They're like, well, we got to make our money back on it. Yeah. So they open, it's an open mold. So that's how Kemper has it. That's how Borealis has it. Yep. And I can tell you that every th one of those boards rides completely different just based on flex patterns. Mm -hmm. But the side cut and the shapes are the exact same. And like you, I could, I saw it the second I was like, this is the exact same board as this board. Yeah. I mean, I could, I could tell looking at it on the, on the webpage. Yeah. I saw it on the website and I was like, oh, that's, that's definitely a story. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's that, but th these are the things you start to encounter and uh, it's it's kind of funny. Like I constantly get people sending me uh, links to the Good Rides review of the Battalion Surfer. They're like, "What is this <laughs> shit? This is like the exact opposite of your review." And your review, and like these are people that bought that board. And they're like, "Your review is so spot on to this." Or, or my favorite is the K two Party Platter for twenty twenty because you know they twinned it yep. and cambered it. Yep. And and I quote, "This thing is only good in thirteen or more inches of deep powder." And I'm like. Or you could go ride park with it because it's a cambered twin wide park board. Yeah. Like, maybe you just need to learn how to fucking snowboard. That's what it is. No, that he, He's gotten better. I've watched some videos. He's gotten better, but he's still not good. No. He's a fucking kook. But these kooks, and, and this goes back to this whole, like, social media influencer and this vlogger thing we got going on. You get all these fucking posers in a position where they people listen to them, and I'm like... I literally spend three hours a week trying to correct things that the good ride have told people. Yeah. And I'm just like, this guy, no, he's fucking wrong. I do it all the time. And I have to explain to people why you don't buy Amazon goggles, which I need to finish that video on the Amazon oh, goggles. man, that has been one of the more difficult things is explaining to people why a goggle needs to cost more than $30. Believe me, if Oakley could do it for 30 bucks, they would. Yeah. Because you know how many more they would just sell because they have the name? Exactly. Instead, people are like, we got to go buy our Kopazi and our, our Jewel and our fucking Outdoor Masturbator. I'm like, fuck that shit, dude. Those things are such fucking garbage goggles. So um, if we do get locked down for coronavirus, I guess I got plenty of time, to, plenty of time to do this. Yeah, <laughs> fucking do those goggles. But I'm slowly getting everything together. I got the pellet gun so I can do the ballistics test. And uh, show people what happens when you shoot a pellet. Actually, I'm going to shoot a BB, but uh, shoot a BB at uh, 
a shitty lens versus a good lens and mm -hmm. how it's going to impact. Like an Oakley is going to be different than a shitty Amazon stamped lens. Mm -hmm. It's going to be doing it. That's why I want to get pellets because the pellet's going to push right through. Right. It'll probably ping off the Oakley, the Smith, the Dragon. It might penetrate, but it's not going to penetrate aggressively. But I'm almost positive if I shoot that Outdoor Master just by hand flexing that lens, it's going to just shred it. Yeah. Just, it's just going to, that thing is going to look like you fucking hit a baseball into a windshield. Mm -hmm. Just, so. so. This, like all these fucking stupid fucking company, like these media publications that are trying to push into snowboarding because we've got this constriction in our media. This is why it's important to support us. Yeah. This is this is what your money goes to is honesty, like blunt force honesty. Exactly. Anyways, I I could rant on this topic for like another hour. We could. I think we're gonna stop. Yeah.